Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is my sewing vlog for the months of March, April, and May of 2022. I had started out the year doing a monthly vlog and then things kind of got complicated and I didn't feel up for it in March and April but I'm back this month and I have a lot of things to share. Let's get started. So I've only had three videos or blog posts in the last few months. Um, again, I just had a lot going on and wasn't feeling up for it. Um, so took a break from posting for a little while. Everything's okay, just sometimes, you know, you need to take a break. So the first video I did is about how to maximize your fabric usage. So whether you are trying to use the entire length of fabric or use as little as possible and get the biggest scraps that you can out of it or minimize your scraps, I have 11 tips that are gonna help you do that. I will link to that down in the show notes and right here. It's a pretty fun one. It's all my tips that I've used and learned and developed over my last 25 years of sewing. So if you really like to save money and maximize your fabric, this video is for you. Then I started a little series talking about my sewing machines. And the first video is about my Janome Horizon Memory Craft 9400. Um, I, again, I will put a link down in the show notes. This video talks about all the features of the machine, why I decided to buy it, how much I paid for it, the things I like about it, and the things I don't after using it for the last three years. My second sewing machine video is about my vintage Singer Featherweight machine. I inherited this machine and have been using it for the last five months. Um, so I really give you a behind the scenes, do a demonstration of stitching, and show how to thread it and how to do the bobbin and everything. So that's a really fun video, especially if you've never seen one of those machines in action. I'll put links to both of those videos down in the show notes. Okay, now let's talk about the things that I made over the last few months. So the biggest project was this scrap quilt. And I've made a lot of scrap quilts before. It's kind of my thing. Um, I like to use up my fabric scraps from my garment sewing projects and turn them into quilts. And I actually have a e-course all about this um, if you're interested in learning how to do it. But I pretty much have endless scraps. So um, I have them all organized and I just kind of go through one batch at a time and make quilts. So this quilt, I put together these fabrics that are blues, so a lot of solid blues, but then also mixed in some um, kind of blue toned prints and some red colors. So I usually stick with pretty like monochrome color palettes because I like the way that looks. Uh, but this one I went a little different. Um, it's really more of a mix, but I think it's pretty fun. I also played with some applique for this quilt and I purposefully allowed there to be some holes. So, you know, not all the time. So, so scr the scraps wouldn't always line up perfectly. And sometimes I'd have a little gap and I just left those gaps there with the intention that I would later cover it up with an applique and patch it. So I could really maximize my scraps and then add even more and try out some new techniques. So I tried out maybe like three different methods of applique on here. And it was pretty interesting to try out the different methods and see what worked for me. Um, I've washed the quilt once and I had to repair some of those appliques. Um, I'm going to wash it again and see what happens. And hopefully in the next couple months, I will update the course to include some more information about applique. Um, but it was really fun to do the applique. And I think I'll probably do more of it in the future. Um, it's just like another nice way to add different shapes to the quilt and also use up more of your scraps. The one big garment that I made is this dress, and this is the Jessica dress by Mimi G. And I hacked it a little bit. I hacked the um, shoulder ties and I added the piping 
And I have not done a blog post about this yet, but I plan on doing one. And I made this for the Los Angeles Frocktails event, which was last Saturday. It was a really great event. Um, shout out to Kelsey who organized, she did such a great job. I loved being able to meet so many sewists in person who live in my area. In my day-to-day -day life, I don't get to talk about sewing that much, so it's really great to meet people who do the same hobby that I do. Sewing is such a solitary hobby, it's really nice to be able to meet people in person. And there were a lot of people there that I didn't get a chance to talk to, so hopefully we'll have more events in the future and I get to meet more people. And watch out for a blog post about this dress. It will be coming soon, hopefully this week. The other project that I finished recently is this Find Your Fade shawl, and this is a knitted project. Um, and I started making this when the pattern was first released, maybe five or six years ago. And I did it wrong the first time because I was stubborn and thought that I did not need, <laughs> sorry, get out of here. So I was stubborn and thought that I didn't need to place a stitch marker, but then I just, I didn't do the pattern right. So um, I let it sit for a few years and, what are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Wanna sit on my lap? Wanna sit on my lap? Okay, be good. So I knit this up and finished it, but then realized that I didn't do it right and I never wore it. And I decided a couple months ago that maybe I would wear it more if I re-knit it and did the pattern the right way. So I frogged it back about halfway and then re-knit it. Um, and I'm, I'm more happy with it now. Um, I ran out of yarn at the end, so it doesn't have a flat top. So I think it still kind of looks not quite right, but I think it's pretty good. I really like the colors. I use yarns that are a mix of like cotton and linen. So um, it's pretty lightweight, but hopefully I'll get some wear out of it. So for frog tails, I had another plan and I was going to make a different dress out of this. I was going to make the bell woven dress by Style Arc. But then I made a muslin or like a semi muslin and decided I might not have enough time before the event. So I set it to the side, but I am still planning to do this dress and I have it all mapped out. Um, I used one of my tips from my video about maximizing your fabric to figure out the adjustments that I needed to do to get that pattern to fit into yards of fabric. Um, and I think it'll be a really great summer dress. I think it'll just be really fun. So I ordered this fabric and the yellow fabric from LA Finch. They are based in Long Beach, so pretty close to me, and they were having an end of bolt sale, and I kind of felt like I needed a pick-me-up, and so I bought these just really fun fabrics, and I'm excited about my summer dresses to make with them. And from them, I also got this um, animal print swimwear. I don't think I have anything else in my wardrobe that is animal print, but I thought that this would make some fun swimwear. And I have some black swimmer pieces, so I think that I can mix and match with this, which would be pretty cool. Um, and I'm working on a new pattern for a sports bra, kind of light bra top. Um, just light support, um, but with cup sizes. And I've made a muslin for that and it went really well. So I'm gonna do some more muslining and I'll probably be using some of this fabric. And I also got some fabric from Maker Mountain and she's closing up her shop. So I wanted to support and I got a couple of these rib knit fabrics, which I think will work for the bra top. We're gonna see. Um, I think these are probably more often used for cuffs on a sweatshirt, but I'm gonna give it a go for the bra top because I feel like that would look really cool. So I have that in the cream and this dark green. Um, dark green just came out of the wash. I still need to wash this one. And also from Maker Mountain, I got this yummy plaid flannel and I'm planning to make a shacket from this. I'll, I will probably use the 
bud shacket pattern from Seamwork. Um, I know it seems like maybe it's not that seasonal, but it always gets cold at night. And especially here in Southern California, the temperatures will drop pretty quickly. Like as soon as the sun goes down, it gets cold. So I always need to have extra layers to keep warm. So a shacket might happen sooner than later. And finally, this piece of fabric was a gift from L.A. Finch. She gave everyone who went to L.A. Frocktails a piece of fabric, and this is a rayon, um, just this really pretty, kind of delicate, dusty blue floral, and there are two yards, and I'm thinking I will do a Miri hack dress. I made a dress hack out of a rayon last year, last fall, and I love it. It's been my favorite dress, so I think that this would be really great in that gathered lace dress. So other happenings, it's currently May and I've been participating in Me May May this year. I started doing Me May May in 2013, but I actually took a break last year um, because my migraines were really bad and I just wasn't feeling up for it. I was really focused on getting healthy and didn't want to devote the time to Me May May. But this year I, pledge to dive in and my pledge was to try not to wear sweatpants or leggings all the time. Um, I work at home all the time so I really wear a lot of sweatpants and I have all these great clothes that I just never wear so I was trying to break myself out of that habit and um, just wear the stuff I have. Um, it's kind of hard because honestly sweatpants are just so comfortable. They keep me warm. They're um, stretchy. So, you know, they're just the thing that I always want to wear, but it has been great to kind of rediscover the things in my closet. So to see what I've been wearing, you can check me out on Instagram and there'll be a link down below. Next month, I am going to be teaching a quilting class at a local sewing studio called A Moving Thread, and they are located in Venice, which is the west side of LA. If you're nearby and would like to take an in-person sewing class, I would love to have you there. I'm pretty sure the class is going to be on June 25th or 26th. I will have a link down in the show notes for more info. I will be teaching the basics of piecing and quilting while we make a quilted pouch like this one. I think it'll be really fun, just a great intimate learning experience where we go over all the basics of quilting. I also wanted to mention that June is Migraine and Headache Awareness Month. As I mentioned, migraines have really been affecting me the last kind of year plus, and really to the extent of having often daily headaches, daily migraines, and not being able to live my life the way I want. And I know a lot of people out there face the same challenges. Migraines are real, are one of the most common disorders around the world. And from what I've read, they're also very underdiagnosed and there aren't very many headache specialists out there. I've been really lucky to have a headache specialist who's nearby and who really listens to me and is helping me find treatments for my migraines, but I know that a lot of people have a lot of difficulty. I'm going to put a link down in the show notes for a podcast that I listened to recently that I think does a really good job of describing what migraines are like and some of the challenges that people face when they have them, and also some of the science behind the treatment and research and new developments that have come out in the last few years around migraine treatments. Migraines are really a very complex neurological disorder and they're really hard to treat. So I just want to send out a lot of love and support to everyone out there who is suffering with migraines and other chronic illnesses. I really understand how debilitating and frustrating it is to have them. And maybe one of these days, maybe next month in June, I will do a blog post talking a little bit more about my migraine experience. It's definitely an ongoing journey of trying to figure out the best treatments and um, remedies. <laughs> well, I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. I will have links down in the show notes to everything that I talked about. 
let me know in the comments if you have questions. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the subscribe button. Happy sewing. <laughs>